But first, I'm suddenly optimistic. No more doom and gloom. For the first time in a long time, I'm thinking the Liberals might actually be on the road to recovery. Now, there are some terrific signs today for them and for the country if they grab three chances that have just been offered. Now, those chances have names. Jacinta Nampajimpa Price, the most exciting new politician I've seen in a generation. Also, Warren Mundine, who'll tell me later in the show about his future. And even Karen Little, a Liberal senator, also new to Parliament. I'll explain why these three are keys to the Liberals' recovery while Liberal frontbenchers like this man most certainly are not. Now, let me be clear. That Liberal recovery will be hard. They're so far back. There's going to be infighting. The old guard's going to resist. And the media, of course, is feral. I'll show you that later, too. In fact, I suspect the Liberals will lose the next election before they really get themselves together. But the reason the Liberals suddenly have hope is not just because the Albanese government is in huge trouble, although... Is that too. I mean, debt keeps rising, the government's global warming policies are going to cause an even bigger energy crisis, and the economy is struggling, as the Treasurer today admitted. Well, we expect uh, inflation in Australia to be higher than we'd like for longer than we'd like. Uh, this inflation problem in the global economy and in our own economy uh, is a persistent one. In fact, Australians are going to get poorer for at least a couple more years, with inflation up, interest rates rising, and rents rising too. As the Commonwealth Bank's chief economist said, today all of that, plus a slowdown later this year, means that any growth in real household disposable income, that's the money you can spend after the essentials, is collapsed and is now deeply negative. But the fact that Australians are suffering and Labor has no answers is terrible news. So that's not actually what makes me optimistic about the Liberals. I mean, it's good for them, but it doesn't make me happy. The hope comes from the resignation this week of Julian Lisa as the uh, opposition spokesman on Indigenous Australians. It's a spokesman who's been for the voice that the Liberals are actually against and should be against. Now, Lisa gone means his job is up for grabs. And here's the big change and the big chance number one for the Liberals. There is now huge support for Lisa to be replaced by Jacinta Nampajimpa Price, as we reported for a few days now, even though she's with the Nationals rather than the Liberals. And it was great to see her out there today fighting for action for Aborigines, again with Peter Dutton, as if she is the anointed one. And certainly she has talked to Dutton about her future and knows she's the grassroots choice. And I'm very, very grateful that there is um, an incredible amount of support around the country uh, in, in terms of the role. As I said again, uh, it is up to the leadership with regard to that particular role. Um, my focus is certainly what's going on on the ground at the moment, certainly in my community and throughout the Northern Territory right now. Now, why Price is critical is that she's against the voice on principle, not just the details. Lisa wasn't. She's passionate and she's persuasive and she's compelling and Lisa certainly wasn't any of that. And to be frank, she has Aboriginal background and this is critical if the Liberals are going to fight against the voice. It's then harder for Labor and the Greens and, and the rest to keep sneering that only racists are against the voice. Also, though, in the running for that job is another coalition senator who is Aboriginal and this one is a Liberal, Karen Little. She's not quite as articulate as Price, but also against the voice. Very useful. But Little can't really be made the shadow minister instead of Price and proved it in a profile today, which said she'd wait until the parliamentary inquiry into the referendum before deciding how intensely she would campaign against the voice. The Liberals can't afford that kind of fence-sitting anymore. They, they really must now show the courage of their convictions or they will be destroyed in this debate. But the Liberals still should promote Little to something. And, and that is opportunity number two. I mean, Dutton can make space for Little by getting rid of passengers like Senator Simon Birmingham, the Liberals' foreign affairs spokesman, who's of the left, has got no cut through, and he is for the voice. He even refuses to help the Liberals fight it. Will you follow suit and quit the front bench over the voice? That's not my intention, Kieran. Yeah, so he just wants to stay there, not fight, just to earn his salary and not do the hard work. Well, not good enough. Another Liberal senator, Alex Antic, was right yesterday to say Birmingham must go to make way for a fighter. 
we've, we've uh, had a party room meeting. The party room position is clear. The position is that we are uh, dis dismissing this. They were voting no. The party's position is to vote no. Uh, I think if, if that is to be Simon's position, then I really do think this makes uh, his position as opposition leader in the Senate and a front bencher fairly untenable. And the third big chance the Liberals have just been given... They're now looking for someone to replace the great Senator Jim Molan, who died a couple of months ago. And so far, the leading candidates we read from, uh, from the Liberal left, like former New South Wales Minister Andrew Constance, who, quite typically for his left-wing faction of the party, gets most publicity when he criticises his own party, the Liberals. So forget them. Forget them. Go for a Liberal like Warren Mundine, who actually heads the No campaign against The Voice. You've seen him on this show. He's a great bloke. And if he's also Aboriginal, so much the better. I know this is the race card, but how about the Liberals for once playing it against the left instead of always being the victims? I'll ask Mundine in a minute. He was interested in going into Parliament. The Liberals grab these chances... If you do, who would then dare say the Liberals are racists for opposing the voice? Because look, Price, Little, Mundine, all against the two, and Liberals, all fighting for the Liberals. And the Liberals would stand for something. Let's say uh, no to dividing Australians by race in our own constitution. That also showed that the Liberals reward people of true talent and courage of whatever race. Now, some might, Liberal MPs might get upset at missing out, being pushed back in the queue. Tough. Your party, your leader, are in a fight for survival and a fight to save Australia from a new apartheid. So, grab these chances.